Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, we're back again. And uh, today we are going to look at something very interesting, gram staining. Okay, so it's not the only type of diagnostic method we have uh, in looking in, at uh, bacteria, but it's one of the most important um, methods. It's one, it's very old. It's a very old method of, uh, of actually doing diagnostic. It's not perfect method, but hey, at least it made an attempt and it has been um, used for quite a long while. So since we're doing bacteriology, I thought it's important to just do gram staining. Um, we may not have time to look at all the other types of uh, um, laboratory staining methods that we do for bacteria, um, but this one is essential. It's important because this is one of the methods that we use to even classify bacteria. So before we, we jump in into um, <clears throat> uh, gram staining itself, it's important to know that the whole concept is based on um, the cell wall. Okay, if you remember our lecture, it's we talked about um, the peptidoglycan layer in a bacterial cell wall. So that is basically what we look at when um, we are doing the staining method. So just a recap is we understand that a gram-positive cell wall has a thick peptidoglycan layer, and a gram-negative cell wall has a thin peptidoglycan layer here, together with an outer membrane. Okay, so there's an outer membrane, no outer membrane in the gram positive, thick cell wall, a thick, a thick peptoglycan layer in a, in a gram positive, a thin one in a, in a gram negative. So that makes, actually that's the concept we build on when actually we are looking at the staining. Okay, for, just don't forget those two concepts, okay? Thin peptoglycan layer, thick one, and there's an outer membrane in a gram negative. Okay, so this is microscopically. Actually, if we look at it under a microscope, so there's an outer membrane here, then there's the thin peptidoglycan layers you can see here, and obviously the, the cytoplasmic membrane or the, the normal cell, cell membrane. Okay, so this is a gram negative uh, bacteria. For a gram positive, you can see how thick the peptidoglycan layer is, and no, nothing here. There's no uh, outer membrane, okay? So that is how it looks microscopically so that you don't think we're just theoretically talking about things that are not there. Okay, so good. So we'll focus on these concepts. We'll look at brief introduction, history, the basic principles, very important, and then the step-by-step -step procedure, and then visualization, how it looks, how the gram positive and gram negative looks under a microscope. Okay, then we will basically look at examples of bacteria in each class. So, what is gram staining? Basically, it's a method that differentiates bacteria into two main categories. So, we have a gram positive, gram negative. This is basically, by the way, it's the very first step in identification of bacteria. When they do, when they take samples, when they do swabs, when they have sputum, whatever, of blood, and they want to test the first thing they the first test they do for a bacteria is gram staining before now they go into other specialized uh, kind of diagnostic tests so it is very valuable in both clinical and research so clinically we have we identify whether you are suffering from a gram positive bacteria so that we know whether we're going to give you a drug an antibiotic that is sensitive to gram positive or a broad spectrum whatever so it's good clinically and also for research, okay? So for example, we want to know different places that have um, a, um, a large colonization by a certain type of bacteria. However, not all bacteria respond to this staining. This is important to note, okay? We normally call them gram indeterminate um, groups because we cannot really determine where they fall in the classification because of the difference in their cell wall. But they're not all cell cell walls have the same structure in terms of how peptoglycan layers are arranged and, and, and all that. There's some small differences. For example, if we have bacteria called mycoplasmas, those are, they do not even have a cell wall. So you can imagine if there's no cell wall, basically there's no way you can actually uh, do gram staining in a good way because we actually rely on a peptoglycan layer 
to, to actually make the, the, the comparison. So this method was um, basically first described or, or first tried by a Danish uh, scientist, he was called Hans Christian Graham. And, but he didn't do the whole thing, okay? He, he, he when we look at these different steps, he only did the, the, the primary staining because the counter staining was actually done by somebody else. But anyway, he was working on some, um, uh, uh, on some cadavers uh, um, uh, while examining the lung tissues of these people who had died of pneumonia. And he discovered that there's some bacteria that uh, have some preference to a certain dye. Okay, that is how he started actually dyeing these um, organisms. Then later on, okay, uh, then we have Carl Weigert, who actually added the, the what we call the counter staining procedure. Okay, he was a German pathologist. So what he did, he brought the counter stain so that now we can definitively say that this is a gram negative bacteria. So in basically, in essence, Hans Christian Graham was able to definitively um, determine a gram positive by doing the primary staining. Okay, so his assumption was anything that did not stain with a primary stain was gram negative, okay, without even testing it. So what did what 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 uh, this other uh, pathologist did, he added now a confirmatory thing. So the counter stain saffronin. So when the color changes to it takes the color of this of the counter stain, then we know that we actually have um, a gram negative bacteria. So this is basically the principles. Of how we do, we do gram, we actually look at or do uh, gram staining. So we have the bacteria, okay, and then it is stained with um, a crystal violet. This is the primary stain. So normally all bacteria will, will stain purple or what we call methylene blue, okay. So all of them, whether positive or gram negative. So then we have we have we put a iodine solution. And this is to form a complex, okay, between the crystal violet and the iodine. And then they decolorize with alcohol so that now our cells which have a thin peptoglycan layer, they will lose. They will lose this primary stain because they've been decolorized. But, because, but the other ones, um, the gram positive ones, which have a thick peptoglycan layer, they will not lose the stain because of the thickness. Okay, so once we do that, then we do a counter stain with saffronin. So remember, the one, the gram positive, which actually had not lost the primary stain will remain with its purple color or blue color. But the one that had lost its color through decolorization because of its thin peptidoglycan layer will now stain with a counter stain, which is normally pink or reddish. Okay, so cells that retain the color of the primary stain are called gram positive, and cells that do not retain the color of the primary stain, and they take the color of the counter stain, they are regarded as gram negative. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is a concept um, that is we're going to look at basically, and that we have to understand that. So these are basically the principles. They normally have four principles. So first one is application of the primary dye. Okay, or the primary staining. So we, we apply crystal violet, which is purple dye. Okay. Then after that, okay, remember we have this, we've already fixed, we've already fixed uh, the sample on our glass slide. Okay. So let's not forget that. Then after applying the, the purple dye, then we also put iodine. We, we call that a mordant because basically it forms this complex. Then what we do is we decolorize and decolorization is done with an alcohol solution. And then after that, we apply a counter stain. Okay, a counter stain now with saffronin so that we can pick whether it's a gram negative or a gram positive, okay? So remember the four steps. There's a application of the primary dye. We put a modern, we put iodine, which is a mordant, or what we call a mordant, and then we decolorize with alcohol, we counter stain, 
with saffronine. Okay, so basically, this is what we'll have um, a gram positive with a um, hypoglycan layer. Is a thin look like and label this on outer membrane that is basically the concept so the steps you're talking talking about is that primary stain crystal violet uh, and remember the sample has to be heat fixed on a, on a, on a, on a, on a slide then iodine which binds to crystal violet and traps it in the cell okay then decolorizing with alcohol and then counter staining with saffron Okay, so the procedure itself, now this is important, but maybe like we are on a lab set, uh, uh, lab uh, setup. So we prepare a heat fixed smear of the bacteria. <clears throat> we cover the smear with crystal violet, then add gram um, iodine, um, add grams of iodine, then we rinse in water and then add alcohol, then rinse again, then cover with saffronine, then wash it off, then air dry it then you observe it under a microscope okay oh, obviously under oil motion which is the highest let's to use um, when you're using um, the normal uh, microscope light microscope so the visualization under a microscope now we've already done all that what we expect to see is a uh, gram positive now this one, we cannot basically they're not very clear to see morphology or shape but we can actually see it's a purple or basically almost blue in color so this is a gram positive bacteria these ones are clearly pink in color or reddish so these ones are gram negative this is how you would see them in a microscope okay so it's a, it's a simple procedure and it's that's basically how it's done so some of the it's good to just to know some of the gram positive and gram negative bacteria most all stuff straps, it's easy to remember those ones. Gram positive Clostridium, like Clostridium tetani, Bacillus anthracis that causes anthrax, Listeria, Enterococci, Corinobacterium um, that causes diphtheria, then Actinomyces, those classes. Then we have gram negative bacteria like Enterobacteriaceae, like Salmonella, Shigella, Klebsiella, Cherosia uh, coli. Then some vibrio cholera, isodominomas, neisserias, both meningitis and um, gonorrhea, morphilus, bodotella, legionella, chlamydia. So all these are gram negative, so it's important to know. Okay, yeah, I know it looks weird, like, but you really need to know. However, we have exceptions, as I said, when we started, we have some bacteria that do not follow these rules because of their different in structure, like mycobacteria, they are not reliably stained due to their large lipid content. Okay, they usually have a mycolic acid on top, okay, and high large, high lipid content. So instead of just using gram positive or gram staining, we just use acid first staining techniques. Okay, which can be, you can actually look at, look it up and see how that's done. So that's mycobacterium examples of organisms here, like uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, so uh, mycobacterium leprae, those those organisms. Then mycoplasma, as I said, these are these are an example of a mycoplasma. Okay, it does not have a uh, cell wall, so therefore, drop staining will not be visible. Okay, then we have others which have different kind of structures, like triponema. Triponema pallidum that causes what? What does it cause? <laughs> Must be knowing. Oh, see, Felicia. Yeah? Uh, then we have Borrelias that normally cause uh, like relapsing fevers. Uh, then we have the, the, they're basically not visible on gram stain. They are spiral shaped. So normally they are they're actually visualized under a technique we call dark field microscopy uh, okay, or examination. Thank you for listening to this. Kindly subscribe and you can also share the video. Okay, goodbye.